Thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Daniela. I work at California Digital Library, and I'm the product manager for Dryad. And I want to spend some time walking through today kind of how we're thinking about and driving Dryad, but in the spirit of JROST, um, thinking about our collaborations and our joint roadmaps and how that's really worked out for us and what we've learned from that. So for those who aren't familiar, Dryad is a global open source data repository. Uh, it was started in 2009 with funds from NSF by a group of researchers. Um, and since then, we've curated and published over 36,000 data sets across disciplines and across the globe. And this is a representative image of a data set just published from COVID in Australia. So at Dryad, we're thinking about data as the building blocks of research. And if they're gonna be building blocks, it means that they need to be supportive and useful. Um, and for that, we mean data need to be curated and archived. They need persistent identifiers and complete metadata. They need to be accessible through open file formats and open licenses. And so when we're talking about data, I don't just mean a CSV file. I mean a properly curated, reusable and archived record of data. And this idea is what drives Dryad's mission and vision, which is to promote accessible, curated, trusted data that drives scientific discovery. And so we know that data are often accompanied by data, articles, code, preprint, data papers, protocols. Um, and so while we're focused on the responsible dissemination of research data, our larger vision has to be promoting best practices across all research outputs. So it's important for us to think about data as a standalone object or here on a Scrabble board as the starter word and its own word, but also the role of data in the larger research landscape. So data's role on a Scrabble board, other words being able to be built off of that. And so thinking about it in that context enables us to better support and lead in best practices for researchers, but it also allows us to work one step ahead of researchers and their needs. And so with this vision of elevating research data, um, promoting a society where data are continually reused, um, we have to think about what's the best way to get there. And obviously that approach has changed a lot since 2009, but what we've really come together on now is that we need to build together. And that entails three different ways of building, with the community, through collaborations, and with connecting open infrastructure. And this approach is absolutely essential because if we work in silo, we will fail. And that's because if we work in silo, we're not gonna be acknowledging the connections to other research outputs. We're also not gonna remain true to our scope, which is small. It's about research data. But it also, if we work in silo, we'll be duplicating efforts. It won't be productive. And it also takes us away from the researchers, which is really distracting. And most importantly about all of this is that we know Dryad can't revolutionize the research landscape by ourselves. So the first part, community participation. Community is a word that's used all the time. And so I wanna define that in our community that we work within, we're focusing on publishers, funders, institutions, and researchers. That's obviously broad. There are so many groups involved in each of those, but at a high level, some examples. With publishers, participation means building seamless integrations with manuscript systems so that the data and article are linked. Or we work with data policy committees at the publishers uh, to be a voice of expert on the data side. With funders, it's thinking about being a repository that's trusted and compliant that can be promoted. So thinking about NSF and NIH and their announcements about general repositories and Dryad. With institutions, we know that the institutions actually own the data. So they need to be connected to this, even if the researchers didn't come to Dryad through them. So for instance, we've built API feeds with institutions for them to be able to actually feed all the Dryad data into their IRs and into their feeds. And most importantly, researchers and remaining that researcher led context. We're really excited that we have built a scientific advisory committee that will help us stay committed to focusing on the needs of researchers. So look out for an announcement in the new year that will be spanning researchers across disciplines, continents and career stages. So we know that we will not be effective if we try to take on everything by ourselves. So we believe that 
making partnerships with folks that are mission aligned, uh, where we can leverage each other's strengths and have work on each other's joint roadmaps, we can find some success. So three examples. The first is was in 2018 with CDL. That was actually right around the first JROST and that was when we first talked about it. Um, and so this was really to grow an institutional community, but also to move Dryad onto a platform that was more agile, able to meet researcher and institutional and other needs. The second in 2019 is we partnered with Zenodo based at CERN. And that was thinking about how we could better support software and supporting information at publishers. And most recently, we're really excited. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we put out an announcement that we have partnered with Frictionless Data at Open Knowledge Foundation, and that's going to increase the quality of our deposits. And the string that really ties all these together is that by making these partnerships and working together, we've reached broader communities that we wouldn't be able to on our own. But we've also had a stronger, more aligned message between all of the different groups that we're trying to reach. So we hope that inspires more partnerships. And then lastly, thinking about open infrastructure. So we are focused on open and transparent and that being the way that leads us through our product development up through our governance. And I've put it the tiny URL on the screen here and I believe Tracy Teal will pop into the Slack. Um, last week, the Dryad board unanimously committed to our the principles of open scholarly infrastructure. And so we released a self-assessment that's at that tiny URL. But open infrastructure means a couple of different things. One is relying on and championing core plumbing, like data site, crossref, ORCID, preservation strategies um, to increase the preservation access of our data sets. There's also plugging into and being a test zone for initiatives like Make Data Count, having an R open sci package that will increase the reach and reuse of our data and let us evaluate that as well. And then lastly, best practices. Roar was mentioned earlier today, thinking about um, having open identifiers, but also curation standards from the DCN. Quality metadata and reporting are really important. So with a mission and core organizational drivers of promoting research data as a valued and reused product of research that drives scientific discovery, we know it's essential to leverage these three points um, of building together and building together in community, building together technically. Um, and this is what's allowed us to grow beyond our roots of just being a repository that started over a decade ago. And we know our work here is not done. We have a whole lot of ways to go so that there's a global um, big adoption and support for open research data. And so this is a call to the JROS community. We're hoping you're interested in building with us um, and that we can talk more about that in the coming days. So join us, help promote us, um, but also let's talk about how our tools and resources that are all being presented can connect and elevate and we can better reach uh, our researchers. So thank you. <laughs>